Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Jill, and today we're going to discuss yet another Bronco recall. This particular recall covers the CV boot slash drive shaft of the front end of the Bronco. It's only the big Broncos, uh, 21 model year, are the ones that are affected. I will have the exact dates down below, so make sure you check our description box for that and to see if your Bronco falls within that time frame. It does cover all trim models and it covers both four door and two doors alike. So if you have either one of those, you might want to check. If you did not receive a letter recently in the mail from Ford, don't panic. Just call your dealership, have them run your VIN and see if you have a recall on your vehicle for this particular issue that's coming up. Now, the recall is for the drive shaft. The letter that we got from Ford was extremely vague. It just basically said, your Bronco, insert VIN number here, has a recall for drive shaft slash CV boot. Take it to a dealership to have it fixed. I'm like, okay, what the hell's going on with the drive shaft slash CV boot? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't explain anything really too much. So I had to do a little bit of digging to find out what's going on with it. Now there is a time limit to these recalls, so you just can't sit on it and just like five years down the road deal with it. You just can't do that. Uh, these issues for this particular one have to be addressed before October 13th, 2023. So you have a little less than a year to get this taken care of. That's more than enough time. So there shouldn't be any excuses on that one. So, the so part that's affected on this recall is the drive shaft CV boot. It's more the CV boot than anything else, but it's part of the drive shaft because it's like pretty much one component. Now, if you don't know what a CV boot is, if you ever crawled underneath the front of your car for whatever reason, you're going to see this black thing. It's about way big. It looks like a black egg with these little rings on it that's like an accordion. What that does, it allows the, the part to move and twist and shift around as your vehicle turns and goes over stuff. Um, the materials that were used to make the CV boot is like a plastic rubbery type material. Well, according to Ford, inferior materials were used to make up that component. And this is important because if you have weak materials for a major component, which a CV boot is a major component. It can cause cracking, it can cause grease to leak, and you don't want that. It can cause debris to go into the boot. And if you know anything about like engines or any kind of metal fodding or anything, anybody that's mechanic will know this. If you have any kind of debris in metal, especially where parts are moving, it's going to grind down that metal. And it's going to grind it in such a way it's going to cause a lot of damage where the entire part is going to have to get replaced down the road. Now with an engine, if you have particles that get in there, say you don't change your oil like you should. And when that piston drives up the, uh, or that rod drives up that piston into the cylinder, if there's debris that are in the oil or on the the piston itself, it's going to gouge the walls of the cylinder. And over time, it's going to deform and cause all kinds of problems. Well, the CV boot, what it does is going to protect that joint of the axle because there's really fine teeth on it. It's like a, it's like a gear. And those teeth have to grip. And if they don't grip, they're going to slip. Well, this is what happens when you introduce debris and stuff like that into it. The debris will cause the teeth to slip, they'll start grinding down, and you're going to have a smooth end instead of a threaded, geared, teethy end, so they're not going to grip and turn. And then you won't have anything to turn your wheels. So that's what that's for. It's the best way I can describe it. And for those of you that have like bone on bone action with your joints, you understand that one because you have the same concept with your joints. You have a lubricating pad that's in your joints as well, as well as it being surrounded by fluids. So when those go, you're going to hear some grinding and cracking and rubbing and it's going to be painful. Well, cars don't feel pain, but it's essentially the same theory. Um, 
Dealership are required to fix all affected vehicles regardless if you have gotten a letter from Ford or not. So just keep that in mind. Um, like I said, just call your dealership, have them run it through Oasis. It takes anywhere between five to 30 minutes to get an answer back, depending on how busy Oasis is. Since they've been getting a lot of recalls lately, it might take a little bit longer to have patience. Um, if they don't call you back, if the dealership doesn't call you back with an answer, just call them again, but be nice about it. Don't be a Delta Bravo, please don't be a Delta Bravo. Um, some owners of the Broncos have reported noises coming from the front end. So if you heard like a squealing noise or have um, like a vibration or any kind of noticeable front end driving, you know, things going on that's not normal with your car, that may be the CV boot having an issue with the axles because you should be able to feel it. I would get that in and say, look, this isn't, you know, right. Is there a recall for the CV boot or the drive shaft? If there is, can we get this fixed? Because I don't feel safe driving my car. But I sure as hell wouldn't. If that was, you know, if that was me. But yeah, it's, um, some people have reported squealing noises coming from the front end, but it was most noticeable under the 30 mile per hour mark. So if you're going like, um, down neighborhood streets because that's usually under 30 miles per hour or through a parking lot and you hear these squealing noises coming from the front end that's probably your cv boot uh not having enough grease within it to hold everything in to lubricate the joints so you might want to check that out but that takes care of this bronco um recall now ours will be affected that's what we got the letter for is for ben that we have the letter for so i gotta get that taken in over the weekend when sean's home so i can pick him up and just let them deal with it now we did get the badland taken care of with that little recall it was a child lock um recall same thing was on the diamond which is behind the camera we got that taken care of as well as the tailgate uh rod that shot off for no reason other than it was under too much tension and it liberated itself. <laughs> now somebody did make a comment down below in that video where, wow, you'll warrant that little item, but not your battery. Well, let me address the battery situation on the Badlands. Ford will not warranty anything that you have done to cause problems. Because we took the interior out of the Badlands and it was out for like 80 plus days and the battery drained because I didn't have a tender on it, nor did we pull the battery. It was still hooked up to all those little clicky things that you hear off and on throughout the day on your car if you're ever in the garage with it. That tends to drain the battery. And because it was our doing and we left it for well over two months, and it killed the battery to the point where it could not be charged. That is not a warrantable part because it was us. It was, we did it, we caused it, and we didn't take preventative measurements to prevent the situation from happening. Ford will not cover that. So we had to eat that no matter what. So yeah, that's that one. So you gotta realize if if it comes from the factory and it already had like a really bad battery and you just jump in one day and try to start your car and it was dead, yeah, maybe that would be warrantable. But because we ripped the interior out of every part of that car and we left it alone for well over two months while we did our videos with it and we didn't have a tender on it, we didn't pull the battery and store it someplace to have it keep its charge or anything, we just did that and that was the end of it. That was our fault. It was essentially our fault. So I wouldn't cover it either. Uh, and I would fight the customer on it. So that takes care of that comment. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, just drop them down below. I'll try and answer as best I can. I will, as I do with all my recall videos, I will put the additional links in where you can run your VIN number and see if it's in there. Now, Ford Pass app, we are not sponsored by them, has changed the way they did their layout. In the last video, if you remember, I told you to check the app if your vehicle is linked to it, and it should be up on the corner somewhere, on the corners, 
I'll put a picture somewhere up here of how it used to be. But they changed it to where you're going to have to like flip through some screens to try and find it. Which eventually just kind of leads you to Ford.com underneath the recall system. So you might as well just go to Ford.com and just bypass the app. But it used to show, like we had all our Broncos listed on the app. It used to show on each one that we flipped to. Up in the corner, the little recall triangle. And if there's like an explanation point by it or whatever, it had a recall on it. Well, they did away with that. Why, I don't know. It was stupid, but whatever. So just go to Ford.com underneath their recall section, or section rather, and see if there's anything on your vehicle. Um, that's all I got for you now. I would consider this a safety recall. I really would because it is the driving components of the vehicle. It is the axles and the drive shaft together. I don't know how long it's going to take for the parts to get replaced. I don't know if there is any back order issues on it or anything. Um, if this Bronco is your only car that you have, make sure that your dealership can get you a ride home or a loaner or even a rental that they can pick up the tab on. Just make sure that you have a way back, especially if this is like your only vehicle. So keep that in mind because um, they have to pay for that. I think that's it for the, but I, if you like the kind of content, if you have any other questions or if you know of any other recalls that I don't know about, because I really haven't been staying on top of it, to be honest, lately. It's just, it's just like a surprise letter that we got in the mail one day. Just drop it down below and I'll do a video on it, okay? I'll talk to you later. See you in the next one. Bye.